we're lucky enough to have two Duro chairs in at the moment. So uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to compare them. So this one is probably more of a standard Duro chair. Now the name Duro comes from the, uh, the very important river in the Peninsula Wars that um, Wellington crisscrossed over so many times and uh, a name, a river, which was uh, very well known to the British Army. Lots of the um, London makers of campaign furniture offered Duro chairs uh, from the mid to late 19th century. It was a standard item which you could buy as well as, uh, of course, a washdown campaign chest, etc, etc, you could buy as a set of items. Some of them have slight differences to each other and uh, might give you clues as to who the maker was, the type of turning to the uh, stretcher or to the arm post, the shape of the back, whether it's square, uh, if it's got a brass bar through the top to hold the cushion in place, etc, etc. Occasionally, you might get a name on a Duro chair, and certainly we have seen the name on the canvas. Other times, of course, the, the canvas or sacking has been replaced through wear, um, and if a name was there in the first place, which it might not have been, it's gone. Also, of course, Duro chairs were sold with a pattern case, which would uh, have some separate legs which would screw onto the pattern case, and make what they would call a desk or a table. And so it was very likely that the manufacturer would have stenciled their name onto that, as well as the owner, um, the owner's details. So this is a satin birch Duro chair. Um, we've made the cushions for it, they've been replaced. It's got a shaped back, as we can see. Um, and we know that makers like uh, Allen and Maple made Duro chairs to that sort of shape back. It's also got caning to help the circulation of air. And you've got leather arm straps. And these straps were so you could adjust it, uh, the incline of a back. And as you can see, very simply, you just drop it on the rings of the arm straps, these arm straps look the original, and it will recline the back. Now they also sold Duro chairs which had a fold out footrest. So if you imagine you've got a footrest with this um, Duro chair, then when you recline it fully like this one, basically you've got a, a make-do bed. So quite a practical chair. To fold it, well, it's as you would expect. We just remove the cushion here. It folds on its X frame. So we'll release the leather straps and the arm posts will drop. That's quite a nice feature, having that extra little uh, lug there just to secure the arm post in position. The back folds down, the legs fold into each other, and there you go. You've got your Duro chair packed up to go into its case. Sets up just as easily, you lift up the arm posts, fix the arm straps, and it's held in place. So this is going to be around about 1875 in date. Um, as I said, the sacking has been replaced here. The straps look original to me, and of course the cushion's been made for it. Um, quite a nice, comfortable, adjustable chair. And what we would describe as probably a standard model. Duro. This Duro is uh, a little bit different to your standard model and in fact we've only had one of this type before. We've seen them illustrated 
in catalogues. Maples um, illustrated a chair of this design. Oatsman, uh, the retailers, the uh, furniture retailers also advertised it. And what's different about it is this arm. We can see that part of it is wooden. You've still got the leather straps on the end, although it looks like uh, these leather straps and the leather cushions have been replaced some time ago. Probably not original, but certainly been on there a long time. So you've got part leather strap, part wooden arm with a padded uh, little rest in the middle there for extra comfort. And then the arms are bolted on at the end. So there's a little bit more involved in folding this chair down. But, you know, it's just a little bit smarter, a little bit more unusual. So if we undo the arms on the bolts, just remove that on the hook, and then the posts fold forward. We're going to put that bolt back in there just so that we don't lose where it is. Do the other side as well, and while it's turned around here, you can see the shape of the back very similar to the other Duro chair and quite a distinctive shape. So let's just undo this arm. Just going to take the cushion forward to remove the weight from it, support that so it falls down, then this arm will come off when it's strapped as well and the post will drop. Let's get that back, remove the cushions, fold it up in the same way as the other Duro chair. But now that it's folded up, I can show you something else which is very interesting about this chair. If we come in a little bit closer, it's made of birch wood, but hopefully you can see that this has all been painted to resemble a faux rosewood. So a lovely little bit of extra detail. Even though with a cushion on there, not many people are going to see it. Um, the officer who bought this chair knew that his Duro chair was perhaps just a little bit smarter than the officer next to him. So that's a lovely little touch. And again, this would have had a pattern case which would have gone into. And that would have had the maker and the owner's details, which of course are now sadly lost. But a very interesting and unusual Duro chair. It's uh, made of birch, painted uh, to the back to resemble faux rosewood. Very unusual for these wooden arms. As I said, we've only um, had one like this before, although we've seen them illustrated in makers catalogues. And it's going to be mid to late 19th century in date. We can't really get any more accurate than that. But a very interesting chair. So there you go. Two Duro chairs, one set up, one folded, one a very comfortable standard model, one just that little bit more different.